Okay, good morning everybody. Monday, January 25th, Board of Control. Will the clerk please call the roll? Good morning, calling the roll for the Monday, January 25th, Board of Control meeting. It is 11.03. Uh, Dale Miller? Here. Ann Baker? Here. Here. Trevor McAleer serving as an alternate for Pernell Jones? Here. Mike Chambers serving as an alternate for Armin Budish? Here. Lee Tucker serving as an alternate for the fiscal officer. Here. Nicole English serving as an alternate for Mike Dever. Here. Lenora Lockett. Here. We have a quorum. Okay, moving on to a review of the minutes from January 19th. I will make a motion to approve those minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Second. This is Dale. Uh, seconded by Councilman Miller. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the minutes are reviewed. Next on the list here is public comment. If there's any public comment, feel free to speak at this time. Okay, there is no public comment. Moving on to contracts and awards, please. First item, BC 2021-32, Department of Development, requesting authority to prepare amendments to contracts with various providers for foreclosure prevention and real property tax counseling services for Cuyahoga County homeowners for the period April 1st, 2019 through March 31st, 2020 to extend the time period to March 31st, 2021 and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $485,000 with Breaking Chains Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $50,000 with CHN Housing Partners in the amount not to exceed $60,000 with Community Housing Solutions in the amount not to exceed $100,000 with Empowering and Strengthening Ohio's People in the amount not to exceed $150,000, with Home Repair Resource Center in the amount not to exceed $50,000, and with the Legal Aid Society of Cleveland in the amount not to exceed $75,000. Good morning, Sarah Parks Jackson with the Department of Development. These contracts that we are seeking approval of the amendments on were originally approved under a formal RFP process. Um, the contracts were scheduled to expire in March. However, due to um, the pandemic, the agencies asked and we concluded that we would amend to allow the agencies to continue to provide the necessary um, financial counseling during this time. After determining um, the needed HUD, HUD funding was available, the contracts were sent out to the agencies. Unfortunately, we experienced a high learning curve in staff understanding of um, the process, which delayed the um, submission of these uh, requests. Staff has become now more adept at processing and we have assigned a staff person the responsibility of collecting all the required documents to ensure a timely return and accuracy of those documents and to allow a timely input into the Lawson system. We have instructed staff that perform the um, Lawson input and the CM input processing that um, it is necessary for them to make management aware when there's a problem so that we could assist them in being able to move forward in a timely manner. Our approval dates are predicated on the fact that um, these are federal funds. And even though we might not get approval of the federal funds until later in the year, they are always effective January 1st of that year. And HUD did not provide us with an extension on the deadline for the expenditure um, of the funding that we received. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Sarah. Are there any questions from the board members on this item? Uh, Nan Baker? Yes, please. Um, yes, and I certainly do understand your explanation and appreciate the lengthy explanation you put in writing. And also, for the record, you have um, put in place uh, policies that this should not happen again given that this contract ended earlier in March of last year. 
So thank you for uh, answering the question and giving us a very detailed explanation. Um, it's appreciated. Thank you, Councilwoman Baker. Okay, any further questions on this item? Hearing none, then I will make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second, Man Baker. Seconded by Councilwoman Baker. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Thank next, you. Next item, BC 2021-33, Department of Human Resources, submitting an amendment to a contract with Surancy Life and Health Insurance Company for flexible spending account administration services for the period December 5th, 2017 through December 31st, 2020, to extend the time period to December 31st, 2021, and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $60,000. Good morning, Pat Smock on behalf of Human Resources. This is a request to extend the administrative agreement with the county's flexible spending account provider. Uh, employees participate in pre-tax medical savings accounts, child care accounts, or pre-tax parking accounts. And this not to exceed amount is for the administration of those pre-tax accounts. Uh, the benefits staff has met with Oswald, the county's benefits consultant. They're working together on an RFP for these services for the future. We're being conservative with the timeline and extending this a year because the employee funds are deducted through payroll deduction and sent to the vendor electronically. So if a new vendor should be selected through the RFP process to provide these services, an interface from the fiscal payroll system to the provider would have to be built and tested. The not to exceed amount requested is the same as in previous years and we appreciate your consideration of this item. Thank you, Pat. Are there any questions from the board on this item? Hearing none, I will make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second, Mr. Chair. Second it by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2021-34, Department of Workforce Development, submitting an amendment with Towards Employment Incorporated for Job Seeker Services for Applicants with Felony Backgrounds in connection with the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act for the period July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2021, for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $174,747. Good morning, this is Lauren Carey with Department of Workforce Development. We are requesting approval of an amendment for additional funds um, to an existing contract with Towards Employment. They provide um, job seeker services to individuals with felony backgrounds. We originally did an amendment for just a six month budget based on having not received our annual allocation now that we've received it these funds would take us through the remainder of the program year. Okay, thank you, Lauren. Are there any questions from the board members on this item? Hearing none, then, I will make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second, this is Dale. Seconded by Councilman Miller. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2021-35, Department of Public Safety and Justice Services, on behalf of the County Executive's Office, submitting an RFP exemption on Requisition 4995, which will result in an award recommendation to United Way of Greater Cleveland in the amount not to exceed $130,000 for call center services to provide information to residents regarding COVID-19 vaccinations for the period January 25th, 2021, through uh, April 4th, 2021, and recommending the award in connection with said RFP exemption. Yes, this is Alex Pellum, Director of Public Safety and Justice Services. Uh, as Sharon just mentioned, this is both submitting for an RFP exception and the recommendation of award to enter into the contract with United Way. Uh, what this platform will do is it will provide options to allow eligible groups as they currently are and come on board uh, to remove some of the barriers that we've found with this rollout for vaccine um, implementation. You know, in, in what's likely the worst and most deadly pandemic, we truly don't believe that a lack of information should have a positive correlation with sickness and suffering. 
this is a plan that will last 10 weeks uh, and not to exceed $130,000. Uh, we're going to have, you know, it, 211 serves as a, a trusted information source and has been referenced by both President Biden and Governor DeWine as a go-to information source. Uh, and this will be coordinated with both the public Department of Public Safety and Justice Services Emergency Management Team, as well as the 211 team. Thank you, Alex. Are there any questions from the board on this item? Yes. Uh, uh, go ahead, Nan. Well, ladies first. Uh, thank you. Uh, a couple questions. One, uh, certainly I'm supportive, so thank you for bringing this forward. Uh, just a question on response time. Is this, what is your anticipation of when someone calls, will someone be answering or will there be a delay time or a time where they need to call back or someone will call them back? How are you anticipating the management of the phone call? Uh, Councilwoman Baker, that's a great question. So one of the things that we, we've done is we are working with 2 and one and they've, they're hiring 15 people. So we know as, or we believe, as the calls will likely be higher volume in the beginning, uh, we're going to taper off or, or adjust accordingly. Uh, we built in one to two uh, automated cycles on this, so it should triage some where it asks you if you're in phase 1A or phase 1B, as well as if you're in the city of Cleveland or elsewhere in Cuyahoga County. Uh, as you may have seen last week, the city of Cleveland is doing an internal call bank. Uh, so we believe that will, we built it in to push it there. Um, okay. After that, the plan is, you know, there will be, some, there is a callback option if the uh, wait time becomes a little higher than normal. Um, but we are going through and this is going to be open eight to four. So we'll process, it'll be a, a combination of both in-person taking calls uh, as well as registration and a callback feature. So is, they are processing it, it with just a little more manpower than they would traditionally do 211, if that makes sense. Okay, so I, I know that we haven't initiated this yet. Will you be giving us some updates as to what the average wait time is, if there is one, and you know the, the success of, of the call? This is an important piece, I think, in reaching out to our constituents to make sure they understand the process. Is that, is that in place? Uh, it will be, yes. I don't have any issue reporting out um, to, the, mm -hmm. to the council or to the safety committee or to yourself personally uh, on okay. the success and where we are on this, Councilwoman Baker. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, and I know that all of our, the purpose is to give more communication. So anything we do is better than what we have. Uh, yes, but we'd like to know if, uh, if it is meets the expectations of the program you're putting in place, I guess is what I'm asking. Uh, the second question I had is I see that there was a mailer attached to this, which I also felt was very important for seniors to have in their hand to make sure that they may have heard on the radio or may have read in the paper. Uh, but to have something mailed to them, I think, is, is important so they can review it and read it and understand it. Uh, and I did also read that this was going to be initiated, but delayed or for lower cost or without board of board uh, approval. Where are we on the mailer? Uh, yes, ma'am. So that is the next item on here, but I will be more than happy to walk through that. Uh, through Tracy Mason's team and DSAS, um, public safety was working with that group uh, through the Western Reserve and the HHS team was able to get it at a uh, lower cost from that vendor, uh, so they, that's why that would be pulled. That is not delayed to my understanding. It, it would just go in a different route procurement-wise, so it should still be on par and should still be moving forward. We're working with Eliza and her team in communications as well to get that out. Okay, so you're asking, and I'm sorry to jump ahead, but you're asking for board approval of 36 but not for $10,000 for 5000 is that, or... Uh, no, ma'am. That is 36 is um, going to be pulled from the agenda. Going to be pulled. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And you're able to continue with that, but not needing board approval. And how will we know whether, in fact, that did happen? 
we can, I can, I can work with Tracy and Eliza uh, to make sure we get a report to you as well. Like we're looking at these response times and the call times for 211 service. All right, Trevor, if I may ask, can you manage that uh, and, and get those answers back and report to us? Yes. Okay, thank you. And thank you, um, Mike, for allowing me the question. Sure. Uh, Councilman Miller, did you have a follow-up? Yes, I do. Uh, not so much a, a question, but more of a comment that uh, I, uh, I support the program because I, I think that uh, the vaccine rollout has, uh, has not been everything that, uh, that we would have hoped for and that, that anything that we can do at the local level to help people navigate this process and especially people who may not be as uh, as computer savvy or or otherwise able to navigate it uh, we should do everything possible to help them uh, my comment is that the uh, that the call takers are going to have to be really well trained uh, i've i've uh, been tooling around online and and with phone calls and and uh, and and it's just a mess out there to to uh, to try to find uh, where a vaccine is available uh, i've i've been uh, i've been referred to places in in brunswick and medina rather than locations that are two miles away and and uh, it, it's just uh it's just just not very well put together and the call takers are going to have to have have a really good understanding of what's out there and what's not and and what approaches to uh, making appointments are going to work and what approaches are going to lead to dead ends and they're, they're just going to have to have uh, have have really really good understanding of what the field out there looks like and, and so so i just uh, i i uh, i have concerns that this, announced that this, he's not running for senate in 2022 so so i have i have concerns that, that, that this may not this may not work if the uh, if the call takers are given a, a fairly superficial uh, uh, fund of information about what's out there. It, it's going to have to be uh, really detailed and, and based on a good understanding of, of what's out there. Councilman Miller, this is Alex. If I could, um, and for everyone listening, this was not a softball pitch, I promise. Um, one of the ways we've worked on that is last week we went through and have pulled statistics and pulled uh, locations from the state where these vaccinations are located. Uh, the county GIS department, one of the things, or county GIS has put together uh, a map that's on the website, cuyugacounty.us backslash vax. And what that allows both 211 as well as our residents to do is to take this uh, dynamic information, put their home or work address in, and it will show you uh, which ones are closest to you, as well as what bus routes it's closest to and the bus lines if there are uh, transportation problems or people rely on public transportation to get around. Uh, we've also laid out, um, I believe it's almost 45 different points of information um, on each different process tree, whether it's who has online registration, who has telephone only registration, uh, and our team in the Emergency Operations Center is working to update that weekly so that, or if it changes more frequently, uh, to ensure that the call takers have the most up-to-date information as well as the most relevant ways of finding it. Hopefully that addresses some of your concerns. Well, I, I, uh, I, think, that, I think that definitely is going to help, but I think the biggest problem is just going to be for, for people to actually get appointments. It, it just seems uh, it just seems uh, really difficult out there at this time. 
absolutely. I think, so. I think a lot of a lot of wheel spinning is going to take place, and, and uh, oh, yeah. so so we're gonna we're gonna okay. have have really good information on how to help people get through the log jam and make their appointments. Yeah. Okay. Any final comments or questions on this item? Yeah, Mr. Chair, this is yeah. Trevor. Just one quick question yes. for Alex. Yeah. Uh, do you you might have said this out of what I'm going to say, but do we have an anticipated date of when this Miller would go out? The one that we're not going to talk about, but do we know when this will be going out to the residents? Uh, I don't have that, but I can follow up with you. Hi, okay. hi this is Tracy Mason here, listening to. Hi, Tracy. So, so we are planning to um, have something go out by next week. We are waiting to receive the um, mail list so we can actually do a mail merge and go through the entire process to distribute the letter to Cuyahoga County residents over 65. Tracy, do you know how many uh, how many we would be sending out approximately? Yes, 176,000 letters. Okay, great. Could someone? mute themselves in the background please i don't know if anyone else is hearing the conversation that's going on in the background yes i'm hearing it too yeah i was going to mention it please mute if you're not speaking sure nan go ahead sorry oh okay sorry trevor um no, go ahead, nan. Uh, tracy one suggestion if i may given i had this opportunity to ask can we make sure that the letter that we send out is specifically targeted to the vaccine and that we don't add other county features that we do that are great things but could muddy the water of the letter? Can we make sure that um, what we say in that letter is only about the vaccine? Yes, I'll be sure to share that with um, communications, Eliza Wayne. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to make a motion now to approve um, BC 2021-35. Uh, do I have a second, please? Second, Dale. Seconded by Councilman Miller. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Item approved. Uh, the next item, BC 2021-36, has been withdrawn, so we'll move on to the next item, please. Are the exemptions. Moving on to exemptions, item BC 2021-37, Department of Development, recommending to amend board approval number BC 2019-287, dated April 8th, 2019, which amended board approval number BC 2014-317, dated December 22nd, 2014, which approved an alternative procurement process to receive non-competitive applications from cities, villages, and townships in Cuyahoga County for demolition program funding and resulted in funding agreements in the total amount not to exceed $41 million for eligible costs incurred for demolition of vacant, abandoned, nuisance, or blighted structures owned by the land bank for various time periods between January 1st, 2015 through December 31st, 2020, by extending the time period to December 31st, 2021, no additional funds required. Fair Park Jackson with the Department of Development. Sharon, before I start, I apologize for not catching this sooner. That should say blighted structures not owned by the land bank. Uh, we are requesting the amendment um, of the previous Board of Control approval to allow um, seven contracts that are demolition contracts to extend them until 1231 um, 21 at the request of the city. So I have four cities and I have three land bank contracts that are performing on behalf of the city that have requested um, additional time to complete the demolition because demolition did slow down um in march april and may and then it picked back up again in june but due to the pandemic we did have some um, slowdown in work by the demolition company and therefore we are requesting an approval of the extension okay thank you sarah any questions on the board on this item
Hearing none, I'll make a motion uh, as amended uh, to approve this item. Do I have a second, please? Second. Second. Mr. Uh, second by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Items approved. Moving on. Thank you. Moving on to the consent agenda items. Items BC 2021-38 and 39. Board Hi, this is the Department of Public Safety. Um, oh, sorry. We don't present these, correct? No, but hang tight just in case there's a question. Okay. Uh, Mike, I have two questions. Yes, Nan, please go ahead. On the consent agenda 38, um, I understand there are no additional funds required, and that's because we switched. Uh, focus, but I guess my question is the focus that was switched, is it exactly the amount we had left is what was needed for that second focus of the um, COVID-19 issues? And second part of that, will they be continuing with the OEM um, later this year, perhaps when uh, they find that the focus can shift? Yeah, hi, this is Leslie with the Department of Public Safety. Um, it's my understanding that we're just extending the time to allow us to finish the other project. Um, so it's, it's not that we're switching. I, I think the first part, of, and maybe I'm misunderstanding the first part of your question, but that to me made it sound like we were shifting um, the money for a different purpose. But it's my understanding that we're just extending time so that way we can get back to the original project um, and, and complete that. And Councilwoman Baker, this is Alex again. Um, yeah. What this does it is what to reaffirm what Leslie said. When COVID came on, uh, our team has been integral in the response and the coordination. So this project was delayed a little bit because it wasn't on the importance level of obviously distributing PPE and information. Uh, so we're just asking for additional time to to finish this because the contract would have been, if that makes sense. All right, I didn't understand your explanation that way. So thank you for clarifying that. Thank you. No problem. Uh, my second question, Mike, was on the um, uh, the vehicle and on 3944. 39, this is, uh, the explanation said, this is a new vehicle assigned to um, jail administrator. Gibson, is this a new uh, vehicle that she's never had before, or is this a replacement vehicle that is usually given to the jail administrator? Uh, Rhonda Gibson. Hi, Madam Council Person. Uh, this is Bob Corey and Rhonda Gibson for this item. Okay. Uh, yes, this is a, a new item that, and she's never had a vehicle. Okay. Um, is there a reason why that? we feel that a vehicle is needed at this time? Um, from, from my perspective, the, the three, uh, there are others, but um, in other larger counties like Lorraine, uh, vehicles are provided the warden slash administrator. In this case, we have a jail administrator. Um, when I'm looking at uh, packages to make the, <laughs> the, uh, the applicant job uh, more uh, competitive, especially for someone, uh, something as large as ours. I saw that as an attractive addition. That's not to suggest that we want Rhonda to go anywhere, of course, and she's on the call. Um, the head of protective service, for, for example, has one. Um, uh, the jail administrator has to go around the state uh, at various committees. Um, she has to move from building to building for meeting. Uh, if there's any crises off hours, then there have been, you know, there always are. Uh, she has to drive in off hours. Um, uh, the new jail associated travel is going to is going to be an issue, um, and as she uh, works, uh, she's going to do more community outreach efforts and education. Um, a car would be important, and then Rhonda could talk on this point uh, as far as availability for vehicles in the pool. I I think that might be an issue, but I'll I'll let Rhonda speak to that and see if there's any other points to support uh, this request. 
Thank you. Sure. This is Rhonda Gibson, jail administrator. Uh, it is uh, not unusual to experience <clears throat> that car would not necessarily be available when needed. It's not unusual for uh, me to be requested to go to the admin building uh, the same day. And a lot of times you have to reserve those cars in advance. I've also been told that the pool of spare cars, so to speak, is very limited. For example, we recently just sent four uh, canine handlers to training. And while most days there was a vehicle available for them, some days there were not. So uh, I would share that vehicle with the rest of my admin team, <clears throat> obviously, if they needed to go someplace during the day while I'm here. So it's not just for me, it would be assigned to me. And uh, the discussion was held with previous Sheriff Schilling about it and Public Safety Director Bob Corey, uh, who approved for me to proceed with the purchase of that vehicle. Okay, well, thank you for the explanation. So, um, um, Administrator Gibson, you uh, then do support this. You feel you do have a need. It's uh, not that others, is perhaps similar to our counties, have one, so you should too. You really feel that you have, uh, your duties are not performed as well as they could be given that you don't have a vehicle accessible to you when you need it. Is that what I'm hearing? Correct. I'm using my private vehicle. <coughs> and I, <coughs> sorry, uh, I don't always submit for reimbursement. Um, like if I would go to the admin building three or four times in a week, I wouldn't ask for that reimbursement. And there's been times I've went to Columbus, I haven't asked for reimbursement for that. Um, but it, it would, a vehicle would be necessary for those trips. And so, uh, as Bob said, I serve on state committees. I think it is the desire for Cuyahoga County Jail to continue in a positive uh, trajectory and uh, being part of the jail community is a way to do that. So, um, good relationships are imperative. So, all right. Well, I, I appreciate that. I was just curious as to uh, what the justifications were, and you both have given them to me. I, I appreciate the answer. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. And Councilwoman, I thought you had another item as well, or did I miss that? I guess I did have a third question. Sure. On the um, 026 for the salt, um, well, now that I read your explanation, this is just for county. Is that what I'm understanding? It's not for, um, it's for our county facilities. It's yep. not for cities to, right. uh, to use. Is that right? Nicole English. That's correct. This is, uh, this is uh, Tom Pavich, Public Works. Uh, this is just for the county buildings and parking lots and walkways. Uh, we don't uh, do distribution in the communities at any point. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, anybody, any other questions from the board on today's consent agenda items? Uh, Mr. Chair, this is Trevor. Yes, Trevor. Uh, Bob, just to follow up from Councilwoman Baker's question around uh, vehicle purchase. I, I understand um, your guys' uh, rationale of why you're requesting the vehicle, but I mean, to me, uh, I mean, we have department directors uh, throughout a ton of different county buildings that have to come to the admin building quite often for staff meetings or, or whatnot. Um, and they, I mean, what, why? are we treating this particular one different? Like, right, we, we have other directors that are on boards throughout uh, the state, uh, either be children advisory boards or senior and adult boards or clerk of court meetings and stuff like that. What I just don't understand why we're treating this one different. I, Rhonda's choice of the admin building is not one that I would have picked, but she's, also another building but it is 
for me, putting aside the fact that when I look at uh, making the job attractive in terms of packages and um, supporting making sure that the job is attractive for other applicants should, you know, bond to move on for whatever reason, uh, you have to also look at compression uh, between herself and, and Chief Smith, currently Chief Smith, and then the sheriff. So there's limited opportunities without restructuring entire salary programs for that. But as far as the functionality of the job, it, for me, it is the fact that she has to come to the building at all hours when there's um, a crisis, such as um, uh, a potential um, a, a death or an overdose or in the case of May 30th. So it's her law enforcement duties that are most compelling for me. Um, that I think makes a stark contrast between her position and other directors, even such as myself, um, because I'm not on the front lines, for example, or other directors. They, uh, their, their normal work hours from, let's say, 9 to 5 or 8, 8 to 4.30 or whatever uh, are what they are and don't require travel during a crisis situation. So it's the, it's the law enforcement nature of her job that is most compelling to me with regard to her current duties as a distinction between others that uh, do not have such responsibility. Thank you, Dr. Put on hold. Uh. It's, it's not for you. <laughs> Was that planned? <laughs> Oh. Hey, Bob, to, oh, I'll wait. <laughs> I believe that's the wrap it up music, Bob. <laughs> can, can you, <laughs> Trevor, can you hear me? Uh, oh, yeah, can you hear me? Oh, wait, I can, yeah, and, um, I wanted to add that I understand the, the, the question, um, and just to point it up in, in other jails, the, the warden or the, in this case, the, our administrator often reports directly to the sheriff, which further underscores the law enforcement nature uh, of the position as distinct from other non-law enforcement, non-peace officer positions. Bob, do we, does that, like, for example, does the medical examiner have his own car? You know, I don't know, Trevor, uh, but if you want to seriously hold this for additional information on, on it, I'm, we're happy to do that. It is not urgent. Uh, can we, mainly because of the music playing in the background and uh, I yeah. just want to talk to you and just make sure we got everything. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Right. Okay. All right. And, and Thanks, believe me, uh, we, we we understand the nature of the question, and and for what it's worth, it, it's points well taken. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Okay. Well, yeah. Pop over the music too. <laughs> I may try. <laughs> I don't have too many options here. Go ahead and speak if you can. Just quickly, is the is the protocol for company vehicles as we talked today? Is that left uh county and then used when they work and company? Generally speaking, I can try and go on this one, is that if it's a pool car, it's, it's, there's certain pool cars that are held at the county garage uh, for travel for county employees. But there's also pool cars within each agency um, that has their own cars that they assign accordingly. So uh, I, I think there's a little bit of both. Uh, as the sheriff or, or, or Bob mentioned, there are some pool cars over at the sheriff's, but they're usually utilized versus uh, the county garage is more for employees that are doing one-offs here and there. And the option there is you have to drive to the county garage. 
But our, our fleet manager could certainly, uh, I think, give us an idea who has uh, take-home vehicles. Yeah, Nicole English with Public Works. So fleet is managed under Public Works. And years ago, we went to a model that was less pool car and more mileage reimbursement because it was more efficient. But there are definitely departments that, because they drive so much, that they do have their own pool cars because it is more um, cost effective for them that way, opposed to us charging the back mileage. So the, pool, the pools have gotten less, but there are still departments. And we could get you a list of who has what vehicles if you're interested. If I may help, what is in the possession of the director. Do they have personal and business access to it? Yes, it depends on that. Uh, this is uh, Chambers. I, you're, it's a little hard to hear because of this music, and once again, I apologize. But uh, depending upon the nature, we do have several individuals that have signed up on an annual basis, I believe, that are still taking their car home. And they do get taxed uh, accordingly on that. They receive a, an additional uh, documentation for the IRS. But our fleet manager should have that, and, and Nicole's going to get that to you. Thank you. Also, Mr. Chair, we're, we're just going to hold this item for now, right? So we yes. Can yeah. Music. Yeah. Do you, uh, I'm, I'm beginning to think we should. We only got a couple items left. Do you want to man it through, or do you want to uh, recall in? What, what's your thoughts? Oh, this is the last item. I apologize. Uh, Trevor, how about I, uh, if the board's okay, I'm going to make a motion to approve today's consent agenda item uh, in holding the, uh, the vehicle. Uh, so uh, do I have a second? A second. Seconded by Trevor McAleer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, today's consent agenda item is approved. Uh, moving on to other business. There is no other business. Okay, public comment. Anybody have a public comment? No public comment. I do apologize to everyone for this uh, issue, but uh, I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. Hey, Lee Tucker, uh, were all those in favor say aye? Aye. 